Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at Netgear Insight. I was able to get my hands on a Wi-Fi 6 access point in one of their eight port PoE switches. I did try to get one of their VPN routers. I ordered it from two different places, but it still hasn't shown up after two months. So we're gonna do a video just with the access point and switch. And when the router does come here, we'll do an upgraded video. If you guys are new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks. And if you'd like to support the channel, we have an Amazon store and I'll put the link in the description below. Netgear Insight is a software defined networking, much like Ubiquity or Aruba Instant On. And you can configure this in their cloud or by your Android or iPhone. We're gonna be doing everything in the cloud dashboard as I'd rather do it on my computer than on a phone. So let's go ahead, take a look at the access point in the switch, and then we'll come back and look at the topology. The first piece of hardware we have up is the Netgear switch, the GC108P. On the front, we could see the eight ports, which are all PoE plus, and we could upgrade how many watts are available in this unit. Right now I paid for the 64 watt one, but you can upgrade it to 126 watts by buying a different power supply. We have a reset button and then we have an LED light showing us if we're connected to the cloud and if we're using PoE. On the back we have a Kensington lock and then we have our power input. And the 64 watt version of this switch on Amazon goes for $89.99 US MSRP. Next, we have the Netgear Wireless Access Point, WAX610PA. This is a Wi-Fi 6 access point, dual band, AX1800 speed. Up to 250 devices could connect to this access point, and it's managed by the Insight Remote Management. On the back, we have one LAN port, which is PoE+, and it's a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet interface. On this access point, we could have WPA3 security, network and client isolation, and rogue AP detection. It also includes load balancing, band steering, and assisted roaming. And this access point on Amazon goes for $268 MSRP US. Now that we've seen both devices, let's take a look at the topology we're gonna to be using for this video. As I don't have the Netgear router, we're gonna to have to do the routing through my UDM Pro. We're gonna end up creating two different networks, one on VLAN 80, which is gonna be our staff network on 192.168.80.1, and then another VLAN 90 for our guests on 192.168.90.1/24. So the routing and DHCP will be done through the UDM Pro, and we have our Netgear up top connected to our USW Lite 16 PoE. Connected to the Netgear switch is our Netgear access point, which will create a staff SSID and a guest SSID. For testing, we're gonna be using OpenSpeedTest and iPerfTest. We're gonna be using three different devices. On the main floor, we'll be using a laptop, which has a Wi-Fi 6 chipset in it. In the basement, we'll be using the iPhone 11, which has Wi-Fi 6 as well. And then in this office, we're gonna be using this computer where I have a Wi-Fi 6 card put into it. Now let's go over to the Netgear Insight Cloud Portal. Here you can see the Netgear account login. If you haven't already, you need to create an account. I've already done that. I'm gonna log in with my email and password. Now we're brought to the Netgear Insight dashboard. It's saying you don't have any location. So we need to add a new location. Here it's gonna say location name. I'll just say Mac Telecom Office. And then we're gonna to have to do a device admin password. You can fill in your street address and then you need to select your country. One thing to note about this, these devices are region locked. I bought these from Amazon in the US, I'm in Canada. I tried to add them under Canada and they wouldn't allow me to do so, so I need to pick United States. Select your time zone and then we're gonna press save. Now we can see the new office location has been created. And on our main dashboard, this is gonna give us our summary. So property system health, wireless clients, and port utilization. We could customize this a little bit, but first let's get our devices added. So I'm gonna click on devices, and then we're gonna hit the plus button to add a new device. You could also do this on your phone with your phone connected to the same account, scan the QR code and it will bring the device in. I'm just gonna add the serial number. So now it's asking me to put a device name in. I'm just gonna call it switch and then we'll press next. Now our switch is being added into our cloud controller. We need to go ahead and add the access point. So I'll press add device and then we'll enter the serial number. I'm gonna name this AP and then we'll press next. Now the AP is being added. It says, congratulations, Insight will add your device, install the latest firmware, set the right RF region and configure it for optimal performance. 
This may take several minutes. Do not disconnect the device during this time and then enjoy your configured Netgear device. Now we could go and we could view our devices that are added. Here we could see the switch is connected, but on the access point, it's fetching device status. While we're waiting for the access point to connect, we need to create those two other subnets for our staff and for our guest on our UDM Pro. So we'll go over to my UDM Pro and then we'll click the settings and we'll go to networks. Under networks, we're gonna create a new network. And this one I'm gonna call Netgear Staff. And we're gonna give it a VLAN ID of 80. The subnet is going to be 192.168.80.1 slash 24. And then we're going to update the DHCP range and then press save. Next, we need to create our Netgear guest subnet. So I'll call it Netgear guest. And that will be on VLAN 90 with a subnet of 192.168.90.1 slash 24. And then we'll update the DHCP range and press save. Now what I'm going to do to only allow the management VLAN, the staff VLAN, and the guest VLAN over to the port connecting to our Netgear switch, I'm going to create a switch port profile. So we're going to click on profiles and then go to switch ports. Here I'm going to add a new port profile and we'll call it Netgear. Our native network will be the LAN and we're going to tag the Netgear staff and the Netgear guest and then press save. Now we're going to go over to our USW Lite 16. And the Netgear switch is connected to port one. So we're gonna select port one, click the edit pencil, and then select the new port profile that we created, which was Netgear, and then press apply. Now both devices are connected and the summary page is filling up a bit. We'd see under properties that online access point is one and online switches is one. We have zero clients connected and active ports is two. Right now we have zero SSIDs and we have two VLANs. Under system health, we could see everything is okay. Both of our devices are online. If we look under port utilization, we could see that six ports are available. We're only using two, one connecting to the AP and one as our uplink. We could see wireless clients, which there aren't any right now. And then under notifications, this is just going to give us a log of events. Next, we could take a look at our topology. And here it's showing our ISP is connected to our switch and then it's connected to our access point. Under routers, we don't have a Netgear router connected, so it's not gonna show any statistics, but we have our VPN groups, our data consumption, and the routers that are connected. Under wireless, it's gonna show us our usage for our clients, our usage for our traffic, and then it's gonna show us our connected clients. Under devices, we could see what access points are connected and there's only one so far. Under wired, this is gonna show us our switch statistics. So we could see the usage at the top, we could see the PoE power usage, and then we could see the wired traffic. At the bottom, we could also see our switch that's connected. Under storage, we don't have any NAS, so nothing will be showing up under here. And then under firmware, we could tell it to automatically update the firmware when new firmware comes out. I'm gonna leave that disabled. And we could see the firmware that the access point and switch are on and when they were last updated. Under devices, we could see both our access point and our switch. And clients is just gonna show us our connected clients, which we don't have right now. Under troubleshoot, we have a couple tools. So we could select our access point and we could select our switch. On the access point, it will do a ping test, DNS lookup, a speed test, and a trace route. Under our switch, it's not gonna do the speed test as it's not supported and we could press run test. And then we could run all the tests that we want. Now let's go ahead, create some VLANs on the switch and then we'll create some wireless networks. So first thing, we're gonna click on wired and then we're gonna go to settings. Here we could see VLAN network setup and we'll hit the plus button to add a new VLAN. This setup will create network VLANs which support both wired and wireless devices and we'll press continue. We need to give it a network name which will be staff. Description, I'll name that staff as well. The network type, we're gonna have it as a data network but you could have it as voice or video. We need to give it a VLAN name, which I'll call staff as well. And then we need to give it a VLAN ID, which our staff VLAN ID, if we look back at our drawing, will be in VLAN 80. And then press next. Here we need to select the port members. So my uplink is on port eight. I'm gonna click on port eight, and then I'm gonna say trunk port. We have some other options under advanced settings. We could do video optimization, IGMP snooping, and then we could set traffic priority. We could configure radius and we could do MAC authentication. We could also enable IP filtering. 
We're not gonna enable any of that right now because we don't have the router, but I'll press next. Here we could associate the Wi-Fi SSID with this VLAN and we'll go ahead and do that. So we'll add new Wi-Fi SSID. I'll call it staff. We're gonna to wanna to broadcast this SSID and under band, we're gonna have it set to both. But if you only want it on the 2.4 or the five gigahertz, you have the option to do so. Under security, we'll leave it as WPA personal, but you could put it to WPA3 personal if the devices support it. Then we're gonna put a password in. I'll just do test one, two, three, four. PMF will leave off, and then let's take a look at some of the advanced options. We had set a captive portal if we want, and we could do rate limiting. Under network settings, it will ask us our VLAN, and since we created this wired VLAN, it's just gonna take the staff VLAN. We could do wireless client isolation, and then we could do band steering and fast roaming. We could also enable an SSID schedule. We're gonna leave everything at default and press add. Now that the SSID is added, we're gonna press next. And then IP configuration, we're gonna put none because we're getting all the IP addresses from my UDM Pro and we'll press next. And now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna confirm. And VLAN creation is in progress. This may take a few minutes. Now we could go and press view networks. And we could see here that we have the management VLAN, the staff and the video VLAN. One port that I forgot to tag for VLAN 80 was port one, which is connecting to our access point. So we could go back in and edit that. If I click on the edit pencil beside staff and scroll down, we could see our port members and then press the plus button. Right now we only have port eight in trunking, but I'm gonna select port one and I'm gonna mark that as a trunk port as well and then press save. Now, if we wanted a single port to be participating in VLAN 80, we could do that as well by hitting the edit pencil and then go back down to port members and hit the plus button. Say we want port three to be in VLAN 20, we could hit port three and then we could assign it as an access port and then press save. Now let's go ahead and create our guest network. So I'm gonna click add VLAN. We're gonna continue. And the loading screen takes quite a long time. That's one thing I've noticed with the Netgear Insight Cloud. Now under the network name, we're gonna give it guest. The description will be guest. The network type will be a data network and then the VLAN name will be guest. The VLAN ID will be VLAN 90 and then we'll press next. Here we're gonna tag both ports eight and one for trunk ports and then scroll down and press next. We're gonna add a new Wi-Fi SSID for VLAN 80. The SSID will be called guest. The bands will be both. The security will be WPA2 personal and it'll be test one, two, three, four. Under advanced, we're gonna rate limit this guest network. So we're gonna set it to about 10 megabits down and 10 megabits up. Scroll down to the bottom and then press add. Now we see the guest Wi-Fi SSID, we'll press next. The IP configuration is gonna be none again because the UDM Pro is doing it. And then we're gonna press confirm. Now we could click view networks and we're gonna see our guest network as well as our staff Wi-Fi. I'm now connected to the guest Wi-Fi SSID and let's run a speed test to make sure that rate limiting is working. So I'll bring up the speed test app and then we'll press go. As you can see, we're getting 10.21 down and 13.01 up. So the rate limiting is working. Now I'm gonna run a bunch of tests. So open speed test and iperf test to get some ratings of this Wi-Fi 6 access point. Now I've completed all the tests. The first one we're gonna look at is this PC that I'm working on, which is right beside the access point. So when the access point was set to auto with an open speed test with this computer, we we're getting 647 megabits per second down and 608 up. For the iPerf test, we are getting 359 down and 312 up, and this was set on auto. When I change the channel width to 80, we are getting 682 megabits per second download with the open speed test and 686.6 .6 upload. On channel with 80, with the iPerf test, we are getting 325 download and 263 upload. Now we'll take a look at this main floor computer. And with the access point on auto for the open speed test, we are getting 350 megabits per second down and 278 up. For the iPerf test, we are getting 340.2 megabits down and 233 up. When the access point was set to channel width of 80, we are getting 
2.5 down and 280 up. And for the iPerf test, we were getting 330 down and 99 up. And the last test I performed was on my iPhone in the basement. With the access point on auto with open speed test, we were getting 393 megabits per second download and 270 up. For the iPerf test, we were getting 211 down and 94 up. With the access point set to channel width of 80, we are getting 354.6 download and 150.2 upload. And for the iPerf test, we are getting 193 down and 124 up. So my final thoughts on Netgear Insight, I think it's a pretty good product. Their dashboard is easy to use. The one thing I don't like is they do have subscriptions. With the two products I bought, it came with one year subscription free. I'm not too sure on the pricing, but we'll dig into that more in a future video. I'm going to release another video when we get the router in and we'll do VPN connections and take a look at more advanced configurations. The dashboard does lag a little bit and is a little bit slow when we're switching settings, but it's nothing unbearable. Also, I don't know if they have a local controller where you can control this on site and not have to go out to the cloud. If you guys have comments about this video, please leave it below. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.